It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call S-E-X. Hey, all you wonderful people in nonprofit land. It's another episode of The Nonprofits, the show where we discuss news and topics of the day from a secular humanist perspective. My name is Johnny Angel, and I'm here with Jason, Cynthia, and Nate. How are you all doing? Nate, how you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm having some trouble moving. Uh, I believe it. May have a bone disorder of some kind, <laughs> did, did but a, otherwise did you look I'm at, good. Did you look at a gorgon? I believe I may have. Yeah, the gorgons will get you every time. Cynthia, you didn't look gorgon. at a you didn't look at a gorgon. What did you look at today? What did I look at today? Uh, a lot of spreadsheets, um, my phone, and uh, prescriptions to send to my patients. Oh. That's what I looked at today. That's worthwhile. And uh, Jason, have you seen anything good lately to look at? Uh, no, I've been watching some uh, Star Trek Discovery, so absolutely not. But <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Nate, Nate I, I, I have a question. Uh, didn't, didn't your mother ever tell you that if you keep making that face, it gets stuck like that? Oh, he wishes. She, she told me that a lot of things would happen if I kept doing certain other things. But so far, her prophecies have been unfulfilled. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's why you are now on the nonprofits. Exactly. That's right. And we're and we're glad that your mother was so wrong. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This show, the nonprofits, the flagship, is a product of the atheist community of Austin, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the separation of religion and government and the promotion of positive atheism. Um as with all of our shows, we are going to have the links down in the description below. And we've started doing something. All right. We've started pushing those links out, those articles out on social media. So you, the beautiful people in the audience, can click and read and come back to, to us and tell us uh, what you think after you've read the articles. But if you haven't done that yet, that's totally cool. You can just pause the video unless you're watching live. Uh, pause the video, go ahead, read the article, and come on back and uh, listen to our conversation. Uh, we want to hear from you. So we've got a few segments today we want to talk about. We're going to be talking about the history of Christmas and other winter celebrations. Uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas in the time of the COVID, because it's a reality. We will be discussing, discussing the holiday blues. And what happens when you don't feel quite so holly and jolly, and yet, you know, here we are at that time of the year. <laughs> and finally, a subject near and dear to every nonprofit's heart, the war, the so-called war on Christmas. So many lives lost. So much. Run, run, run. So run, much run, destruction. So yeah. Much. yeah. Attack! Yeah. yeah. I, what is that? Is that a sword? It's yeah, a sword. Right. It's a sword. Jason I've got an attack pit. I am well armed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. So again, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Links in the description. Let us know what you think. We're going to start this one off with the history of Christmas and winter celebrations. Uh, take us out. Who, who's who do we had has this one today? I'm going to take us into uh, into the history of Christmas and winter celebrations. Mm -hmm. um, this article in particular comes to us from history.com and is a just a, just a history of the celebration, how it's evolved over the years. But what we're going to do on the nonprofits, because we are a non-sectarian show and we believe in cultural representation, 
we're going to talk about what some other folks have done to feel good during the winter. Because, believe it or not, Christians do not own Christmas. It's a cultural thing. It's a cultural event. Belongs to all of us. And uh, if, if you look around the world, it seems like a, a lot of folks, a lot of different cultures seem to have just a sort of... Uh, a Christmas celebration, if you will, a Yuletide feast. It's almost mm. like when it gets dark early, people need a reason to feel good. And so we're going to talk about how some other folks who didn't borrow nearly other tenet of their theology from previously existing religions and cultures, yeah. we're going to talk about what some of them had to say about Christmas and what they did. Now, Johnny, I know you had some prolific notes, so I'm going to throw it over to you first off. And as I catch that it that you've thrown over to me, okay, <laughs> I'm going to actually toss it back at Cynthia and Jason because I, I want to talk very briefly Ooh. about, about and, and that was a good, that was a good thing. But I want to talk about some of the history because I know there's some really interesting things that Cynthia and Jason talked about with the formation of the Christmas celebration that we have. Um, okay. Johnny with the flea flicker. Okay, it's a little Fair flea enough. flicker. No, 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 no. It's it's like I've got it. I, I I've caught it. I'm like Master Yoda. I caught your force lightning, and I'm holding it for a little bit. All right, it's still here. <laughs> it's still here, and and I can feel it tingling. It's running up my arm. It run up my arm. And when I can't handle it anymore, we're gonna go. We're gonna go into the thing that you toss back at me. But can we talk a little about Cynthia? I see something about the the, the Christmas holiday origin story, like Halloween and Sam Hain. What what's the, what's all this then? So um, if if you all would remember when we did our All Hallows Eve show, uh, spectacular! I I do was, remember that it was quite spectacular. It was uh, Jason. You that. were there. I, I remember oh, yeah. you were there. Uh, matter of fact, we had a confessional afterwards uh, because uh, you were dressed for the occasion. Yep. And um, we, oh, we the did... things I learned too. <laughs> indeed but you know i i was just thinking like when i was reading this particular article about like you know some of the origin story the origin story around christmas you know it to me it was quite similar to uh all hallows eve or sam hain in the way that uh the church uh and i would say like the historical church like the catholic church once like you know christianity became more a prevalent uh religion uh actually rolled in pagan traditions um in order for you to get christmas right um mm -hmm. i think that like uh all of us are very familiar with you know some of the um some of the sentiments that come with christmas like the yule tide and and i mm -hmm. and and i even remember like growing up singing the 12 days of Christmas. That was uh, a staple that my choir master when I was in uh, Catholic school growing up made us sing. I hated it. It was a very long song, but I always yeah. wondered where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and the what, article what? actually, yeah, it, it talked about how um, the Yule log, which is actually a Norse tradition, um, was said to burn for 12 days. You know, this is something that, you know, was actually um, uh, a, a a tradition that was like um, utilized around the solstice, like the winter solstice. Right. And um, and then, you know, you hear now even commercially the whole, you know, 12 days of Christmas. I know that uh, even for myself and my family, we do like keep our, our Christmas decorations up until January 6th. Um, because, you know, we're lazy and it was like, well, it's the 12 days of Christmas. So we should do that. Right. You know? Yeah. So, um, but like, who, who knew, who knew that this well, was you, actually tied to this, you know? Well, that's, that's one of <clears throat> one heck of a log to burn for 12 days. Indeed. I'm looking here. I'm looking in here in your notes. I'm going to pilfer from your notes just to, Pilf. cause you got Pilf. some good stuff here. Indeed. Pilfin. Um, Pilf. The Norse believe that each spark from the fire of the Yule log represented a new pig or calf that would be born during the coming year. Um, that's interesting. And you said, I'm wondering 
that could be another layer of when the story of Jesus's birth was set in a stable with other animals while laying in a manger. I think that's that's interesting. You also talk about Odin. Can you can you elucidate, to use a J. Mike word, elucidate about Odin? Sure. So um, the article also talked about um, how the marriage of some of these uh, pagan myths, like uh, came with you know Christmas traditions. Um, it talked about how Odin believed that he made a nocturnal flight through the sky, rather people, um, to and the people would observe him flying, you know, doing his dashing uh, across the sky, rather, but. You know how like we growing up think about Santa and his uh, sleigh tied time periods uh, with his uh, eight rain deal. You know, you got He's Dasher got and Prancer and Prancer. Okay. Donner and Blitzen. Forget, Forget that. Comment yeah, Cupid. yeah, yeah, yeah. Donner and Blitzen. Yes. But, you know, that was like a time for us, like we would get all excited because we would, you know, imagine Santa and his reindeer in the sky. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, during the times of Odin, that was not the case. Nay, nay. What did, actually, what did Odin do? Well, uh, people actually believe that uh, when he was doing his uh, dashing through the sky, that he was actually... <laughs> Uh, observing people to see if he would decide if they would prosper oh. or if they would perish. Odin's watching. Precious. Yeah. <laughs> he just glances yeah. down. Yeah. He's like, whatever you're doing now, that's your fate for the next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> and with Santa one eye. watches you all the time. And without right. depth perception as well. Right, right. Oh, right. You know? But oh, right? The little eye he all a... seen. Well, he could have had depth of perception, you know. Odin is a god. He was a god, you know. Thor's daddy. That's true. You know. Thor's no no Mew Mew, yeah. no Mew Mew around. But nope. doesn't matter, you know. He he was like thundering and lightnings, and then he was trying to see like you know who was going about to be you know off this earth, or if you're going to actually have riches, or you know untold health, or things of that nature. And and I was yep. just thinking like, could this be a correlation between you know? He's making a list. He's taking checking it twice. Going to find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is yeah. coming to town. Odin find God is coming to town. Punishment. That's right. <laughs> well, you've got you've got something else here about uh, <clears throat> juvenilia, and and also uh, and some something else. Tell us about juvenilia. Yes. So uh, also according to the history.com uh, article that Romans. Okay, like so, like we always wondered, like how did we get the whole you diggy about December twenty fifth being depicted yeah. as the day that we celebrate Christmas, right? So the Romans observed that Juvenalia, a feast honoring the children of Rome, in addition, members of the upper class often celebrated the birthday of Mirtha, Mirthra, Mithra, 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 Mithra. Mithra. Yes, that is that is Mithra. Mithra. Wrong not series. Ma yeah, wrong <laughs> series. Mithra. Yeah, right. We're not talking about Mothra or Gamera. We're not talking about that. We're talking about Mithra, okay? And Mithra was an infant god that was born mm -hmm. of a rock. You know, rock of ages, yeah. care for me. And for yeah. some Romans, Mithra was the most sacred day of the year. And Mithra's not to mention birth. that. Yeah, Mithra's birth. Mm -hmm. And now, not to mention that Rome has been the center of Christianity, at least, you know, the worldwide propagation of it, right? You know, mm -hmm. matter of fact, I even learned that the word propaganda is an Italian word that actually came out of the, Christ the Catholic Church. Did bene. you know that? Did you I know did that? not. Bene. Now Didn't you know. know that. Molto bene. <laughs> Molto bene. Jason, and, I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I was even going to mention that, you know, this uh, juvenilia was also like a celebration that was like almost like a Mardi Gras. It was very celebratory, you know, a lot of, you know, eating and drinking and, you know, a little debauchery going on, a little, you know, a little something, something, you know, parades, all that great stuff. And yeah. and also uh, uh, Saturnalia was Saturnalia. Uh, correlated. Yeah, Saturnalia yeah. was actually also correlated with this particular um, celebration. Yeah. And it sounds a lot of fun. I, I think that I want to yeah. Christmas to go back to that. If I, I think if Juvenalia I think is for the juveniles, for the kids, mm. for the little kitties out there. Long, you got to think about the kids. 
Got to think about Always. what about the children? Uh, Jason, I saw something in your notes, a little lump of coal in your uh, stocking, because you were pointing out that the ideas, the, the, the celebrations of Christmas and Christmas time are not original to Christianity, that they were. No, no, you don't stay. They were, yeah, I mean, it, it, it has always seemed that Christmas and, and a lot of, you know, Christian holidays are, well, they're marketing decisions, as the uh, great philosopher uh, George Carlin once said. And and so yeah, they would take uh, as I said all these different little holidays, these little tidbits of mythology, you know, because the Bible doesn't say the exact date as to when Jesus was supposedly born. Right. Um, right. You know, you do get a little bit of um, uh, Luke two, uh, verse eight through eleven, which is used on uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas special. You know, what is Christmas all about? This very vague and noncommittal uh, passage that people will go like, well, that just fills me with the spirit somehow. So, yeah, yeah how, how do you how do you shore up your numbers? Because, you know, in the early days of, of Christianity, you know, what have you got? You, you don't have a lot of anything other than just yeah. people saying, hey, you know, but if you get some of the holidays and you kind of expand upon it and, and mm -hmm. that's where you get the the holidays becoming you know debaucherous and then actually getting banned uh mm -hmm. in in britain and in boston uh it was it was banned gonna, in the 17th century we're gonna get there we're gonna get oh. to the banning we're gonna get to the banning because there's there's a war going on and i hope that your windows are blacked out right now because you know i'm in the civil defense and there are air raids right now <laughs> happening. Uh, Anti-Christmas air. But anyway, anyway, I'm seeing in the notes, I'm seeing, I'm seeing Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. You Nate. are. What on God's green flat earth are you talking about with Coca-Cola? <laughs> what does that high fructose corn syrup drink have to do oh. with Xmas? Nate, tell me. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get to Coca Cola, but uh, but this just dawned on me as we were speaking. This wasn't in my notes, but it just dawned on me that there's mm. a certain verse in Jeremiah mm. that oh. states that you should not be like the heathens, and you should not cut down the trees and adorn them with jewels. <laughs> mm. So you know, if there's gonna be a war on Christmas, oh, no. maybe y'all should read your own book first. Yeah. Maybe it's kind of maybe kind of is verboten in in mean, book. But anyway, do that, or you could. <laughs> I don't have it. any jewels. I, mean, I think I'm all right there. I I, I have I I have silver. You know, a it's shiny bit. bobbles. But I ha shiny I have bobbles. Right I have now. shiny bobblings, but I I don't subscribe to Jeremiah, so I think I'm okay. Yeah, but talking about You're but talking about Coca Cola safe. for sure. For Coca Cola, Nate, I want to hear about Coca Cola. Why? What does Coca Cola have to do with Christmas? Coca Cola has a lot to do with our current conception of Santa as a jolly fat guy in a red suit and a beard, mm -hmm. and that uh, Coca Cola. Um, it was the first to depict him this way uh, in an ad in 1931. Before that, he was quite a severe looking fellow. I wanted to, to I w wanted to see if we could get a picture of like the pre-1931 Santa Claus um, yeah. because he kind of looks like Waluigi. I don't know if there's any other Nintendo fans out there, but oh, he's yeah. like a thin, rather severe looking man. And then <laughs> Coca-Cola comes out and he, and you know, in an effort, effort to obviously sell cola they yeah. um they they rebrand him as this image and then over the years um i was reading that they actually tried to rebrand him a couple of times and sort of change his image and people would write mm -hmm. him and be like that's not santa that's santa. not my santa this is america i need my santa fat and eating cookies damn it yeah <laughs> america. not my santa not my Santa. So this is hashtag not, not my Santa. Yeah. yeah, hashtag not my Santa. Yeah. So like this this whole um, conception of what Christmas in Santa is 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 really it's it's just a really successful marketing campaign, kind of yeah. like what Jason was saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. agreed. Well, you know the that's in the in the United States, but the mm -hmm. other parts of our planet are 
are other siblings who live on this globe. And it's a globe. I hear, All right. I hear there are dozens of other people that live outside of the United States. Wow. Tens, there are actually, tens of other people. Tens of dozens? Of dozens. I, there's actually Possibly. people that live outside of the United States. Really? Pray tell. I can't prove it. But but I, I did a little bit of research into, uh, uh, full disclosure, I fucking hate Christmas. All right. Um, I don't like Christmas. And I'm, I, if other people do, well, that's jolly good for you. I... I don't. I like New Year's. I like Halloween. Um, but I, I went through and I and I went on Britannica.com and I typed in winter solstice celebrations from around the world and I found some really fun ones. Soyal is a, a Zuni and Hopi Native American uh, holiday to honor the winter solstice on December 22nd with a ceremony to lure back the sun god who has traveled away from the tribes during the winter. It also marks a new cycle of the wheel of the year. It's a time of purification, and there's a festival. Damn right. 16 days, prayers, supplications. That's not so much fun. But there's stories, and there's a feast. Who doesn't like that? Um, people dress up in masks, and they do all kinds of fun stuff. And children are given dolls that represent the Kachina spirits as gifts. Um, the Persian festival Yalda, or shab e is a celebration of winter solstice in Iran that started in ancient times. It's the last day of the Persian month of Azar. It's uh, traditionally the victory of light over dark and the birthday of your friend and mine, the sun god Mithra. Uh, families have special food like nuts and pomegranates, and they stay awake all night long to welcome the sun. That's kind of like going to midnight mass, but uh, with uh, nuts and pomegranates. Um, Inti Raimi is a solstice celebration that comes in June. But why, Johnny? Why would a solstice celebration celebrating winter come in June? Well, I'll tell you, because it's in Peru. Ooh, ooh. And it's an Incan celebration in honor of the sun god. It was celebrated before the conquistadors showed up and ruined everything for many people. The Spaniards banned the holiday, but it was revived in the 20th century, and they're still doing it today. So good for the uh, descendants of the Incas. Um, we've got, uh, I've got something on Saturnalia. Uh, one thing that I would mention is that there was a, a social inversion that took place as well, where slaves were briefly quasi freed from their Roman masters. That's gotta be a slap in the face. Um, but uh, also we have Dong Ji. The arrival of winter, an important festival in China. Uh, the family gets together and celebrates the wonderful year they've had. And that's between the 21st and the 23rd of December. Um, it They think it started as an end of the harvest festival with workers returning from the fields and enjoying the fruits of their labors with family. And they have special mm. foods such as, I know, I know, Nate, you're always talking about Tang Yuan, glutinous rice balls. And how your family, um, oh, you stay up so late making those glutinous rice balls. Um, so much gluten. So much gluten. Give me that gluten, boy. <laughs> One of my favorite holidays that I learned about some time ago was the, the holiday of Sol Invictus, which sounds like a metal holiday. Um, Unconquered Sun was long considered the official sun god of the later Roman Empire, but basically it's the sun victorious, the sun conquering the darkness. And um, that's some interesting history there. And if I may be indulged and stop me if you I may, may be. not be indulged. All right. Or right, one person has be. indulged me. I've got I, some I will fun. indulge you as well. Indeed. I have a majority of the indulgent. Uh, Jason, would you <laughs> be willing to join in the indulgence or are oh, you going to be I a probably. naysayer? No, I, uh, I, you can indulge a semi-reluctant indulgence on the part of Jason, but I think you'll like this. In Norway, they hide their brooms for Christmas. Why? Because evil spirits and those wicked witches will fuck up their brooms. Don't ask me why. It's something they do. In Finland, it's customary to strip naked and take a long and uh, respectful stint in the sauna uh, oh, yeah. where there's a legendary sa sauna elf. This sounds pretty good. And then 
after the sauna, they go out, the Finns go out and they go out to the evening celebrations and they believe that the spirits of their ancestors hop in the sauna. So they get like the, the, the second steeping in the sauna Are they water. still naked Ooh. when they go out? Yeah. Probably. It's Scandinavia. They do, they do everything naked in the snow. In I winter. See. Yeah. Um, in winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Johnny, do oh, Iceland. Do Iceland. Do Iceland. Do Iceland. Do well, Iceland. Okay, let me, I'll go over to Iceland. Uh, a giant cat is said to roam the snowy countryside at Christmas time. <laughs> Farmers yes. would use the Yule cat as an incentive for their workers. Nothing's changed. Those who worked hard would receive <laughs> a new set of clothes. But those who didn't would be devoured by the gigantic cat-like beast. And to this, this day, is why I keep telling people that cats are evil. Obviously, Iceland yes. agrees with me. Well, in in Caracas, in Venezuela, they they go to church on roller skates, and mm. the capital is pretty much closed down until uh, eight a.m. to so it's safe. In the Netherlands, Dutch children place their shoes by the fire. In hopes that Sinterklaas will fill them with small gifts and treats. Sinterklaas, yeah. Oh, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Oh, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas is coming. Carrots are left in the shoes for Sinterklaas's faithful steed, a white horse named Amerigo. In olden days, naughty children would receive a potato in lieu of gifts, but potatoes don't cut it anymore. In in Austria. Uh, that's where the tradition of Krampus comes. And we all know about Krampus now because it's Krampus. it's made it into popular culture uh, where Krampus carries the wicked children off to hell, I guess. Um, which And there's a lot of them. One of my favorites. Did you is, just say it's a uh, lot of them? Did you, just, did you just say that there's a lot of wicked children? There are a lot of wicked children. There are a lot of wicked I children. Have, it's not I have fault. three. Okay. It's not their I've, fault. I've, I've sired three of them. So yes. What do you do if your kid children. is a brat, pampered and spoiled like a Siamese cat? <laughs> it's it's it, the, the mother and the father. Uh, Catalonia. You go to Iceland. You go to Catalonia Iceland. in Spain. <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones. I learned about this about ten years ago. Cagatillo or defecating log. Locals in Catalonia create a character out of a log. They draw a face on it and they give it a hat. Then they spend two weeks feeding it fruit and nuts and sweets. And on Christmas Eve, the family beats the log with sticks and sings a song that translates to, if you don't crap well, we'll beat you with a stick until the log excretes all of its treats. Uh, how that happened, who knows, um, but and then they pull the presents out. I know they pull presents out from under the blanket. Okay. That's this fun. Why? Is, that's so like, just, all that is, is just a way to say that you should take your probiotics and make sure that you are regular. That's all that is. Yeah. That sounds, uh, that's just basically a Hansel and Greta pinata. And I'm, <laughs> I am down. I am fucking down for a you Hansel know, start and it up. pinata. Start, start it up. Start it up. So what? Do it. New, New tradition. Startup, Hansel, Gretel, Nansen, in, Hansel and Gretel. Um, here's one you might not want to do. In mm -hmm. Greenland, they eat matak or matak, a raw whale skin with a little blubber. And kiviak, which is wrap, made by wrapping an elk, which is a small Arctic bird, in seal skin, burying it for several months and eating its decomposed flesh. Oh, vegans need so, not fly. Great. Vegans need not uh, show up. Guatemala has a holiday called La Quema del Diablo, the burning of the devil. And so they believe that the devil and other evil spirits live in the dark, dirty corners of your home. So what they do is they spend the week before Christmas cleaning the living shit out of their house, and they mm. put it all outside, and then they burn it, which is, mm. you know, good excuse. Uh, in South Africa, they eat caterpillars. Yummy. Uh, which, you know, a um, lot of good uh, vitamins in there. Uh, in New Zealand, they don't have pine trees. So they have the Patutukawa tree, a beautiful tree. And they they decorate their community with these trees uh, and decorate there. Um, in Sweden, the Yule goat, which is, I, I assume, cousin Ooh. to the Yule cat and neighbor mm. to the log, goes back to at least the 11th century. <laughs> A man-sized goat figure led by Saint Nick who had the power to control the devil. In the 7th century, it was popular for young men to dress as the goat creature 
and run around pulling pranks and demanding gifts. This sounds like a little bit like Halloween, actually. And it and sounds, it sounds like good. Devil's Night. Yeah. yeah. It sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, by the Mary, 19th century. Mary of Sanheim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The goat became the good guy. Sure. And a giver of okay. gifts. Instead of Father like Christmas, that. men in the family would dress up as the goat and give gifts. That's nice, isn't it? I like that. I do too. Yeah. In the Ukraine, they would they would throw an artificial spider and and put a web on a tree, and this origin this tale has its origin in an old tale of a poor woman who couldn't afford to decorate her tree and woke up on Christmas morning to discover a spider had covered it in a glorious sparkling web. And remember, they eat flies and gnats and things like that. So be be kind again, to your spider. Again, this sounds like a Halloween thing again. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, Mary. Wait. So is name. this the origin of tinsel? I don't know. I mean, it's where is it from? It was Ukraine. So I don't it know. Could be. Could be. Could be. All Ukrainian. Those Russians Ukrainian are a viewers. festive bunch. Those, those Slavs are a festive bunch. They are. They they love a good. They love a good uh, winter solstice. Uh, in Portugal, Consoda, the traditional Christmas feast in Portugal. Families sometimes set extra places at the dining table for their dead relatives. It's thought that the practice will ensure good fortunes for the household. In some areas, crumbs are left on the hearth as well. well that's like pouring one out for your homies a little bit, isn't it? Something like that? No. no Word. No, no, no. Word no, is no. born. But I, I need you all to move on. Let's go to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> In Italy, La Bethana, the old witch delivers presents to kids in Italy. The story goes that three wise men invited the witch to accompany them to see the baby Jingus. And she said she was too busy. Mm. Well, well, so now she has to deliver presents to everybody else, I guess? Sure. Mm. Yeah, sure, why, why not? not? That's, why that's not? good penance. Women's yeah. work yeah. is never done. Yeah. Uh, Czech Republic, on Christmas Eve, unmarried Czech women, it is said, stand with their back to the door and toss one of their shoes over their shoulder. If it lands with the toe facing the door, it means that they'll be married within the year. Hold so on, that's let me just... see if I can, can, can I try that real quick? You yes. Test this? Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to do, it, do it, it, Cynthia. Go for it, go for okay. it, Well, I mean, like, technically I'm by a door, so let's just see, uh, what is it? The toe is supposed to, uh, don't 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 engineer it. Just throw your shoe. Let's see what happens. Do it. Okay. Okay. Now look. Let's look. What's going on? Well, it said one year, right? No, 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 no. Well, if it lands, look, with, and then it'll it's a look. The tell us. Yeah. Look at the look at okay. the shoe. Where is it facing? Okay, it's facing. Ah, oh, shit. I, I think it's facing <laughs> out away from the door. So damn it, I'm still not gonna get married. Well, Damn. that's that's all right. And the last one, and then we're gonna we're gonna stop with this this uh, sleigh ride of of traditions. On the evening of December fifth, German children leave a boot or a shoe outside their bedroom door. In the morning, if they've been good little kindern, they will wake to find the shoes filled with sweets. That sounds wow. like uh, Saint Nick's Day with the stocking on the on the thing yeah. if they haven't yeah. they will only find a branch and i love these old traditions where it's just potatoes and branches and like <laughs> homey country stuff um germans also hide a pickle in their christmas tree why would you do that that doesn't probably, surprise me probably because <laughs> they were drunk okay could be, uh, could be. No, no, pickles are good pickles are good uh they are not i like dill pickles so maybe too pickles yeah. are disgusting Ooh. what more pickles for me yeah. more pickles for me jason then. oh my goodness i <laughs> oh, no. love pickles, pickles. Really good jason. Mm. cynthia likes yeah. pickles nate likes yes. pickles i like pickles jason Just not even a little bit no jason? not at all Oh. Is, Jason is objectively wrong and has never truly enjoyed a tuna salad you, sandwich. There, I said take, it. You take a pickle, or you take a cucumber, piss all over it, it becomes a pickle. No thanks. That's no, that's not, that's, not that's not really piss. how that works. <laughs> right. but take okay. A, you, you don't know the phrase. Take a pickle, eat it up, and all year long you'll have good luck. You've never heard that before. No, I think that's a made-up phrase. People are saying it. Pretty, I'm pretty well, sure that's, that's how all phrases. It. Johnny that's Sam. how all phrases start, Jason. They get made up. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yes, Cynthia. Yes. 
you know, one of the things that I also uh, discovered in the uh, article was um, how enslaved people uh, in um, that was in chattel slavery actually uh, at celebrated Christmas. I I was wondering if if it was okay for me to kind of you know go over that just just a tad bit. Oh, please, please do. Okay, so um, many enslaved people uh partook in some holiday pleasures uh christmas time could be treacherous uh according to robert e may a press a, pro, a professor of history at purdue university and author of new tide in dixie slavery and christmas and southern memory owners fears of rebellion during the uh season uh, sometimes led to preemptive shows of hard discipline, harsh discipline rather. Uh, mm -hmm. Their buying and selling of workers didn't abate during the holidays, nor did their annual hiring of out of enslaved people uh, stopped as well. And some whom uh, would be shipped off away from their families on New Year's Day, widely referred to as Heartbreak Day. But mm. on the flip side of that, um, Slay, um, there were uh, some breaks actually that was uh, given to enslaved people uh, during this time of year. So many enslaved workers got their longest breaks of the year, typically a handful of days, like, you know, maybe six or seven days. And some were granted the privilege to travel to see family or even get married. And many received gifts from their owners and enjoyed special food, special foods rather, untasted mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the year. You know, like things that they can actually get their hands on, that they cr uh, created themselves, and even like was even given like better foods around this time of year to be uh, festivalistness. You know what gift would be would have been really great to to give them. Mm. Their fucking freedom, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 just saying, just saying. Right? Sherman's march to the sea. <laughs> Sherman's march Eventually. to the sea. Eventually. Go yes. fuck yes. yourself, Confederacy. Yes. Yeah. Um, on top of on top of special uh, field order uh, fifteen, indeed. Continue. Uh, yeah, look that that's up. um. Look that up. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Something you don't learn about in school the history of the, the folks who were living here in bondage. Um, and that's interesting. And, and, and look at that, those gifts, look at that, that kind heartedness, that circumscribed kind heartedness that didn't change the status of the, of the folks living under those conditions. Um, but you know, I don't know that that's, that's a downer, but you know what, that's something we need to know about. So thank you for bringing that. To me. Um, Hashtag go CRT. Gosh. Yeah, go CRT. Um, <laughs> and with that said, um, any last thoughts upon uh, Christmas traditions and winter solstice traditions in uh, the United States, Canada, and the world? Uh, I just wanted to mention that, you know, mm -hmm. the article mentioned uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas, yes. um, the, uh, the popular poem. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know that a um, an Episcopal minister, Clement Clark Moore, actually wrote that poem. Uh, and yeah. and every year, you uh, as I have mentioned, I I grew up as an Episcopalian, mm -hmm. and that uh, during midnight mass uh, around Christmas, that particular poem was always read. Um, mm -hmm. However, we never really got through the history of it, so it was kind of interesting to find out that you know this uh poem um was composed and that's kind of where some of the foundation of even how we looked at jolly old saint nicholas first started so read the uh, article people read the article yeah things start like we, we were saying earlier like things that's made up well everything's made up everything that we do yeah. is made up the, the world is the real world but human culture is a made-up thing in one part in large part um, there was an article I, I tried finding it. I couldn't find it. It was by, it was just talking about just the whole idea of why we celebrate, uh, solstices, uh, some people's thoughts on it. But when you think about it, when you're, you're turning the corner on the shortening of the days and you think about how the sun is starting to come back and, um, it just really appreciate when you can, when, when it works for you, when it's healthy to do so, how, 
our ancestors sometimes barely survived the winter. And there were many people who did not survive the winter. And the reason why we celebrate with lights and the reason why we celebrate with gathering together is because it might be the last time we see some of the people and nothing's really changed, right? Because we still go through the, the human life cycle um, of, of, you know, birth, aging and death. And there's a dismal concept, but um, if you do have a healthy family and friend group, uh, tell them you love them every day if you can, but at the very least, find a time to tell them that you love them. But you know what? I'm going to move on to our, uh, to our next segment, but I'm going to tell you that we've, we've hit 10,000. I know we're at least at 10.2 by the time of recording 10.2 thousand, but we can do fundraisers. We're ever growing. We shall not stop. We shall, we shall recruit our subscribers on the beaches we shall subscribe, uh, get our subscribers on the shores and in the cities. Uh, we appreciate what you have done by clicking like and subscribe and sharing with your friends, family and neighbors and what have you. Uh, please keep it up. We'll keep on putting out the content. Uh, we want to hear from you. So so make sure you email us uh, and um, reach out to us. But I'll tell you what, um, we uh, have uh, a lot of shows here on the Atheist Experience Network. And um, if you didn't watch this week, well, well, here's something that you missed. Be the porn you want to see in the world uh, might yeah. be my new favorite catchphrase. I'm going <laughs> to see if I can't get that done up on a T-shirt or, or whatever else. <laughs> Biblically, uh, you have meta ontologically presupposed the divinity of our biblical Christological God within your start and premise. Biblically, biblically, I'm going to drop this call because biblically, I'm getting tired of this conversation. Yeah. Just because I have a penis or something doesn't mean that you could prescribe that I ought to not have long hair or uh, I shouldn't paint my you know, nails category. You're a fertile field that we would love to plow. Alex, Johnny wants to plow you, yeah. um, but he might need to plow you yeah. further in, in a different show. I don't know what you missed in science class, but if you think that vaccines just don't work, then you are no longer in touch with reality. I wonder if he believes in what the experts say about gravity, or is he jumping off buildings? I don't know. That's right. You don't have to watch us live. You can also check out the Atheist Experience Network, a YouTube channel where you can find all of the ACA shows in podcast form. Subscribe at tiny.cc slash AEN podcasts to listen to episodes of the nonprofits, the Atheist Experience, Secular Sexuality, Truth Wanted, Talk Heathen, and see every single episode or at least listen. So Johnny, Johnny, say subscribe one more time. Subscribe, in that subscribe. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh God. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to our to our next. <laughs> Christ. Let's move on to our uh, next segment. Uh, we we're talking about uh, Christmas in the time of COVID. Uh, no less a personage than Jason Sherwood was going to take us into this one. Yeah, so uh, this article comes from The Guardian, um, you know, who's going to uh, Christmas parties. Uh, they interview four people uh, out, out of the UK. And I would just say that, you know, I don't have any official plans. Uh, we might be uh, meeting up with some family, um, but all of us are going to be vaxxed. We're going to mm -hmm. be boosted. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to take precautions. And really no matter no matter how you want to meet with families you got to take precautions um and i and i really think that this this covid has has taught us a lot of things that we've been doing wrong for way too long yeah um how we celebrate you know birthdays spitting all over a cake uh, <laughs> and then just feeding it to everybody seriously what were we thinking um and and yeah. so really yeah it's no matter if there's a <laughs> pandemic if we actually get past this or if it just becomes a seasonal thing uh kind of like what the flu is now um you know we just we all need to to take pre precautions um okay 
what does everyone else think? Yeah, I, I think it's almost certainly going to be endemic to the human experience uh, for for the foreseeable future. Um, one thing that that struck me when I was reading this article, hearing what four you know supposedly random British people had to say, was that all of them were at least considering the opinions of medical experts. Ooh. Now, whatever tangent they went off on after that you know, is, is up to the individual, but at least all of them were, were informed and were actually taking that into account when they were, you know, arriving at their decisions as to what to do over Christmas. So I, I think there's a lot that North Americans, not just Americans, there is a lot of anti-vaxxers up here in Canada. Okay. What? There's a lot of COVID. Den- oh yeah. I, um, I, I had a guy, I have a coworker that told me that COVID is a government hoax with a kill switch that makes you infertile. And I'm like, wait, what, what, why would they, why would they need to make you infertile if they have a kill switch? Doesn't one do the other, but you know, anyway, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. oh yeah, there, there's, there's crazies up here too, folks. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, mm-hmm. that was the one, one common thread, even though I didn't agree with, um, with the second guy's, yeah. you know, uh, analysis, um, what 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 do you think, Cynthia? Yeah. Um, I think you're re- referencing uh Ben. Mm. Uh, first off, Ben, like, yes, Ben. Yeah, yep. I, I was like, <laughs> we, we, we I saw us, your notes. Yeah, yeah, like Ben, the two of us will love no more. Uh, yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> you're a rat, Ben. You're a rat. No, I'm just kidding. I, I really don't know Ben. Um, but uh, but one of the things that uh Ben said in the article, he's one of the uh four that were um. Uh, speaking on their experience and how they were going to go forward concerning the Yule Tide, right? Mm. Uh, he said that it is now a personal choice mm. about personal risk, yeah. and and one of the things I, you know, I, I like to ask questions. That's how how that's how we learn, right? You know, they said like there's no thing, there's no there's no such thing as a stupid question. I beg to differ. However, uh. Yeah. You, but it, but regardless, asking questions is how how you learn, and and I know that I personally would love to have asked Ben, um, specifically, why would you utilize your personal choice to put yourself in unnecessary risk? You know, I I I know that like um, we uh have been uh in this particular pandemic space for about two years now, roughly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that my family for the, our, my immediate family have been mostly like, you know, social distancing, you know, cutting ourselves off from the world uh, together. And, um, and I know that how we're going to be celebrating Christmas will be, you know, in that area. So I, I just, you know, I, I just want to really preface like, even though like, yes, this is supposed to be a time of like love and and family and things like that. I I say still, you know, do the necessary things to keep yourself safe. Can I rephrase something that, uh, I I would like to rephrase Rephrase. what what Ben said. I I would like to say it so that it is more accurate and that what we're, what we're seeing now is that it is, it is now a personal choice about public risk Word yeah, to your mother. yeah yeah okay. yes yes these people absolutely. are making they're making choices for us for us that you know are, are you know have gotten vaccinated for those of us who can't get vaccinated for health reasons yeah. mm-hmm. they're they're making a choice for other people and right. i always say that you know your rights yeah can only extend as far as mine and yeah. mine can only ex- extend as far as yours. And, right. and yes, that's there's not an right. old legal ax. There's an old legal axiom that your right to swing your fist ends at the other person's nose. Uh, fist versus mm-hmm. nose. 10 U S uh, five sixty eight. <laughs> 1982. Yes. USC you're right. 56.01 <laughs> right. subsection right. 3. Right. Exactly. Uh, um, now you're right. You're all right. I completely agree. Um, who? I, I mean, very few of our actually we have some people in the comments who are 
hardcore uh, pandemic deniers. And you know, you know, much love, but no, check no. yourself. No, no, well, no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not. Much dumb. <laughs> it's, it's, What's wrong it's, with the uh, people? That's what I wanted to say. They're human beings. They've been led astray. They think they're, you know, they're doing their toilet research. Whatever it is, I don't know. But um, get with the program, uh, toilet researcher, COVID deniers. Uh, here's my thing. Like, I'm not doing Christmas with my family. I'm not a family person. But why do we have to go from? Because here's what I said. Uh, ben said, "I'm absolutely a." planning to attend parties and social events regardless of the variant and will be going to as many as possible to make up for the horrendous ordeal last year. <clears throat> Here's my response. That's, hmm. that's exactly how Ben sounds too. It, it, it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, British accent though. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's yeah. How that works in text. I, I don't hear accents. Um, but my response, okay. my response, okay, woke Johnny. Okay. <laughs> my response to Ben is grow the fuck up, man. Like, you know, yeah. uh, I get it too. I uh, really want to go to all the clubs and all the museums and all of the, I want to lick all the doorknobs. I do. But how about you? We just segue gently into the world. All right. I, I just, I don't understand this, this desire. And I, I talked about like, okay, well you eat healthy for a couple of days because you're, you're trying to get back into shape. You're trying to take care of your body's nutri nutritious needs, you know, nutrient needs. Then what do you do? You just eat, you know, tubs of ice cream for like a couple of weeks. No, you're trying to maintain a healthy world, you know, and, and healthy lifestyle and, and going to all these parties and all these variants floating around. Why do you have to, why do you have to go to the, the exact opposite? Why can't you just gently have a small gathering? Yeah. You know, why can't you, you can meet outdoors if you live in, in the right part of the world. Um, but anyway, um, you don't need to make up for lost time because then you won't have any time left when you're dead. <laughs> you won't have any lost. I, time. I love how we're all just dunking on typhoid Ben and we're not even <laughs> talking about the other three people. <laughs> that, that <laughs> they they have been more reasonable. <laughs> no. Well, no. I will I, I will say this uh, for uh, Gareth because I, I did appreciate yeah. Gareth's comment uh when gareth said clearly the experts are concerned and clearly they believe that unnecessary in-person social interaction should be kept to a minimum yes. until we know more about the new variant uh omni omnicron cron cron it's rather it rather seems Om that omicron? the government um, Omicron. Um, Omicron. 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 Yes. Omicron. Yeah, Omicron per CI8. Per CI8. Yep. Indeed. Definitely indeed. I, I was trying Been to there. see. Done that. It rather seems that the government is uh, proprietizing a jolly Christmas line over preventing spread of the new variant. We've seen that from Are the beginning. They, we've no, Are we've they... seen that. We've seen that from the beginning. As as soon as the first lockdown happened. Uh, mm -hmm. At least here in the United States, the, when the first lockdown happened, they're like, we need to open up. And then the month proceeding, yeah. we need to open up. And even now, the You're numbers right. are increasing. Yes. The, the numbers are cre increasing drastically. And and we're still, you know, companies are, are still saying, oh, yes. we're going to postpone. But they're also saying we need to open up. Yeah. You well, can't have it both ways. Nate, Cynthia, Jason, supposing that uh, you don't want to go to holiday festivities, saying that let's suppose you don't have a lot of jolliness that you wish to share. I want to talk about the holiday blues on our next segment. Cynthia, please take us through this. Certainly. So uh, this particular article is entitled uh, Holiday Blues, Put Your Mental Health First This Holiday Season. It is uh, from the Health uh, University of Utah, and uh, it is authored by Leon, uh, Leanne Bentley, and mm -hmm. who is their social media and communication specialist. And basically, uh, this particular article is uh, referencing uh, a... Um, a child and adolescent a psychiatrist named Rachel Weir, mm -hmm. um, who also is a psychiatrist at the Huntsman uh, Mental Health Institute. And she shares her expertise and tips on making this holiday season more enjoyable. Uh, and I, I know for me uh, specifically, I wanted to um, 
to touch on this because like mental health is definitely mm -hmm. one of my soapboxes that I, I like to, to get on. I, I get on a few soapboxes, but mental health is definitely one of them. And, and, and the reason being is because especially like around these particular time periods that, you know, uh, behavioral health, mental health, and even mood can be very much so affected uh, adversely um, in this particular time period. Uh, and especially like uh, if there has been times where it could be uh, very hard, if especially if like you've experienced loss around this mm -hmm. time, um, if you may not even necessarily have like a lot of uh, relationships versus family and friends, mm -hmm. that could be an issue as well. And so one of the things that, you know, she does make some suggestions as far as like, you know, some of the things that you can do in order to uh, avoid the holiday blues. Um, and I, I'll just touch on a little bit and then you guys, you know, chime on in. Like one of the things she said is to uh, follow a schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things she said about that is that it's important to schedule things, uh, ideally to uh, have someone like a family, a friend member or a therapist to hold you mm -hmm. accountable, you know, through a hard time. I, I personally have told you know, family, friends, and also my patients, if it's not on my calendar, it's not real. That's know? right. Let's, yeah. let's, let's ask the other panelists, what do you feel about uh, following a schedule? Let's go through this all together. Hmm. Thoughts on following a schedule, Jason, Nate, anything? You know, uh, it would be great to follow a schedule uh, <laughs> during the time of the year, but yeah. um, you know, because you think, okay, so it's hard coded into the calendar. The 25th is Christmas. Right. Sure. Uh, th 31st is New Year's Eve and all that. But unfortunately, life doesn't work that way. And no. sometimes you got that uncle who he works the late shift and, you know, can't come in until, you know, th three or four days after uh, the event. And so you have to kind of work around that. And so sure. it, it's great to have a but schedule. You, but you can calendar that. You can schedule yeah. that. Yeah, after you talk to, to your to, to said uncle. Yeah, I think I think what we're talking about here, Jason, and I get your point, but I think what we're talking about here is for those who are feeling down and low, um, yeah. sometimes you need to have, and correct me if I'm wrong, Cynthia, since you are the expert in this field, sometimes to help us keep going, we got to put one foot in front of the other. And that's what's happening here. It's like, Indeed. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit here and I'm going to watch the rest of Star Trek Discovery. And you know, that's yes. a bad sign. You wow. know, that's a really bad sign. And I so, like discovery, by the way, but continue. <laughs> so following a schedule can help you move forward in the direction that you want to move forward in. But you're mm -hmm. you're not just sitting and loafing. Nate, thoughts on that? I mean, that's that's true at any time of year. It is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I read this article and I, and I thought, you know, a lot of this advice really doesn't really seem all that useful like it it's mm. kind of seems like a fluff piece like this she's like um watch what you eat um don't get drunk with your conservative uncle in the room um plan mm. your activities um sure. set boundaries it's like it's like well no shit like tell me something i don't know you, right? you, you say <laughs> that you say that okay <clears throat> and i and i get it but i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree with you nate i said i'm sorry I disagree with you because well, you go go right ahead because let's, you're let's do this. you're fine you're fine Nate but there are people that struggle with depression seasonal depression they are alone sure. there are people that are in our audience that maybe right now are mm -hmm. dreading the holidays either because they're going to be alone or they got to go face the rest of the family whatever that means and 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 I and I think you're right it could be seen as a fluff piece and I see your point there's no substitute folks in the audience for getting the help that you need from a professional, right? From having a no. close knit band of uh, friends and, and social support group. But these are some things that you might keep in mind if you are dreading the holidays. And I think that's that's what's and, happening. And if you've, I mean, if you've never lived through a holiday season before, I guess this might be useful. Um, but like to push back against what you're saying, like when I read this, I mm -hmm. was like, okay, let's, I want to kind of take a look at this myth that depression and suicide rates spike during the holidays. So I spent a little bit of time looking into this Very good. and I found a few studies that found no link between the two. 
Okay. Um, there is no increase in suicide rates. There is no increase in depression rates. And in fact, a few studies that I found, uh, one by Winchester Hospital, found that the opposite is true because you have that additional exposure to a support system that you might not have for the rest of the year. So it seems like maybe seasonal affective disorder is more of a plausible explanation for why people feel down during the winter months as well as... I, I i will say this I, I will say this and 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 this may be anecdotal um but i'm going to say it anyway we love anecdotes cynthia sure 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 yeah anecdotes are evidence all day um <laughs> they're not good <laughs> evidence but they're evidence <laughs> right they're evidence all day good enough of it it becomes data it, it, sure, sure. I don't know plenty yeah. of people who I just want to punch in the face because of their anecdotal evidence. Regardless, you know, I, I will say, you know, at you know, working with the population of people that I work with, um, a lot of them don't have uh, very close family members. Some do, but not a lot of them don't. Um, not a lot of them do, rather, and um, and a, a lot of them will. Uh, uh, confide in me uh, to tell me that, you know, holidays are very uh, difficult yeah. for them uh, because um, they don't always have like a mom, a dad or a sister or a brother or what have mm -hmm. you to really confide mm -hmm. in. Some of them actually go through like, you know, chosen families, you know, especially since like, you know, a, a large a portion of my paper, patient population are LGBTQ. So, um, so I, I definitely have, you know, been exposed to you know, what do you do around this time period where everyone is talking about gathering with their family, gathering with, yeah. you know, people who who are, you know, close to them. And that's not really something that is prevalent to them at that time. But I, I will say like a, a couple of things that I did agree with with the article. I didn't particularly agree with the, you know, the limiting alcohol use on my child. If I have to put down wine, what the hell? But, you know, I, I will agree with limiting your time on social media because, you know, if you get too much involved, you know, especially in Twitter, like you will crash and burn. And and I really do encourage people, but this is 365, 366 if we're like in a, um, a leap year, to set boundaries. You know, just to say that this is this is my this is my boundary and and in and, 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 and this particular boundary shall shall not be crossed or there's going to be an issue mm -hmm. um and and i think that that's uh something that all of us could to to do to really protect our mental health our behavioral health even in, reg regardless if it's holiday season or not that was the best piece of advice in this entire article was was setting boundaries and being like you know, like, we're not going to talk about this today. This is Christmas. We are going to have a good time. We're not going to talk about whether abortion is right or wrong. Yeah. We're just going to have a good time and hang out. And, and like, that's what I have had to do with so many people yeah. in my family. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like, yeah. can we not get into this right now? Can we just enjoy the moment? Jason, what, what are you, your thoughts on your thoughts on setting boundaries? I see something in your notes. Yeah, I mean, it, for a lot of people, it is is incredibly difficult. I mean, we are we are social creatures at the end of the day. And, you know, some people, they, they just they feel like they need to be more agreeable, that they need to let those boundaries down. And and I'm sorry, but you can go ahead and and put those boundaries up. You can say, look we're not going to talk about this or I'm going to have to leave. And, you know, yeah. Is, is family going to blow up their phone, your phone? Absolutely. It's, it's possible that they will, but does that make you the asshole? Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, you need to take care of, of yourself and, and not worry about what somebody who is, has very toxic views of, of you yeah. and your life Agreed. Dictate how, how things should be. Yeah, uh, agreed. I, I think the, the takeaway is this really setting boundaries, both boundaries with your own time, boundaries with your level of participation. If you don't feel comfortable, just don't do it. And there's a pressure to participate. But you know what? Uh, that's just a tradition. You don't have to follow the traditions that are set out in front of you. You have to think about your well-being and the, the well-being of the people that you are in charge of for the people that you care for children other uh, partners what have you and i say you know 
make your own traditions. If the traditions that are set up before you don't work, if you don't want to talk with Uncle Ted, who's got his mega beliefs or whoever or whatever it is, uh, you don't have to do it. Uh, I mean, it's it seems like you've got thousands of years leading up to you going to your aunt's house to go hear about how awful so and so is. You don't have to do it. You can you can just you can like, like humongous says in Mad Max, the road warrior, just walk away, just walk away and no one has to be harmed. Um, and so with all that said, you know, again, if you have access to mental health uh, professionals, s- seek them out uh, and and don't rely on us, but um, take care of yourselves this holiday season. Take care of the people that um, that uh, you care about. But you know what? I, I think we need to move on. We've Wait, had... can I throw in one thing? You can throw in one, one thing. thing. If you need, su- I'm sorry, Johnny, I see you angry. <laughs> but if I could throw in one thing, if you need support over the holiday season, you can always yes. t- get in touch with Recovering From Religion. That's 24 a... hour helpline. You can get peer support. You can get professional support. Yes. If you need someone to talk to, they are there. And the suicide hotline as well, if you are that far along in the suffering that you're dealing with. Um, so I take back my stink eye, Nate. Thank take you. it back. I withdraw. Our... <laughs> what? I w- RFR gave me my start in uh, yeah. atheist activism, so I am forever grateful. That's a very good point. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to our last segment of the evening. I am going to take us into this one because this was my little pet project. Um, we're going to be talking about the war on Christmas. And uh, we have an article here from Politico.com, which is the short history of the war on Christmas. And basically it just goes from where it began and, um, and, and, and some, some significant events in the war on Christmas. And I want you all just to, to, to step in and chime in whenever you feel like it. Personally, uh, really it's about, in its essence, it's about the secularization and also the unchristianification of oh, dear we. the Christian <laughs> holiday. Um, uh, New word. Per- the- Let me collect my pearls on that one. Uh, yeah. I have pearls yeah. to collect. Clutch them, <laughs> pearls. Um, so, personally, I'm torn. I, uh, last year, I said a whole lot of uh, Merry Christmas because yeah. I was thinking, yeah, go fuck yourself. You know, I'm. I, I, Christmas is no longer a Christian holiday. You lost. No offense. We've got we got a lot of uh, you know believers who watch the show because they they do not a lot, but some believers who watch the show because they like the the angle that we have. They want to hear what we have to say. I'm sorry. Like for those of you that believe that the Christ, we should keep Christ in Christmas, you lost the war. Um, and partially, yeah. it's it's because you're in love ball, with yeah. capitalism. All mm-hmm. of us. Love to buy those 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 gifts. So should I say Merry Christmas and then rub it in, and also Happy Merry Christmas because it's a jolly time of the year. Um, but should I say uh, Happy Holidays because there is, it's more accurate. There's Christmas, mm-hmm. there's Hanukkah, there's all those holidays we mentioned before from all around the globe. Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, yeah, crazy yeah. Kwanzaa. Um, um, yes, Kwanzaa. You know, I know, you know that. The Christ in Christmas, is, Jesus is kind of like a movie character in in the, in the Christmas story that we really celebrate. You know, it's mm. he's. We all know that Captain America and Darth Vader are just fictional, but uh, you know, but we still there's still a lot of people talking about those characters as though they exist. They have a lot of opinions. You know, what was Cap up to? All this stuff. So for me, the War on Christmas is since I first heard about it in in high school, I guess. It's uh, I called it a clown show here in um, my notes. Uh, Christmas is the biggest freaking holiday of the year. People who aren't Christian, people who are like Jewish, people who are, are like other religions buy things. Hanukkah kind of got absorbed into Christmas is now is like a Christmas celebration of buying gifts. Um, capitalism has defeated the sacred. And what I think is interesting is a lot of the conservative religious folks tend to also be free market capitalists. So they're forced to choose between that consumerism 
and the sacred celebration of Christmas. And yet we see what's winning. We see what's winning across the country. People are buying, going bonkers and buying all kinds of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really like consumerism. Um, I, I appreciate, you know, s sacredness in life, but I'm, you know, I don't believe that Jesus, you know, is my dude. So, so anyway, um, can I go first. You can go first. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on that? And then I got some examples <laughs> of an actual ban. We started talking about actual banning of Christmas in history and some of the fake shit. Nate, what do you got? Okay, well, I just wanted to talk about um, a personal story because mm -hmm. I have an, a very religious family who ha told me when my children were young that I was ruining it for my kids <laughs> by telling them that Santa wasn't real. We talked about this yesterday, Johnny, but I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. get this in no, there. No, no, it's but important. But I told right? them, yeah, but I told them that, that Santa wasn't real, but he's kind of a personification of the of the yeah. way we all feel at Christmas. He's like, a, he's a figurehead. Like, yeah. we all want to feel happy. We want to help each other out. Mm -hmm. So every year we would, I would get a Christmas that I would, uh, I would get a Christmas present that I would label from Santa. It would be a gift from the, for the family. So it would be something like that we, that we can do together, a board game, like some movie tickets, something like that. Um, and I don't think them knowing that the character isn't real, like that didn't subtract from the joy of unwrapping that present from Santa at all. Yeah. In fact, I think it magnified it because we all knew Santa wasn't real. We just knew this was going to be a really cool thing for everyone that we could all do together. Yeah. Um, so that was... That was my response to to the whole Christmas thing. Okay. And the conversation with my mother when when she yes. was talking about, you know, I ruined Christmas. And I'm like, well, unlike you, mom, I didn't want to teach my kids that t that some invisible invisible magic being is watching their every move and promising toys or eternal life in exchange for obedience. Okay, but wait, but 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 just to bring it back to like the war on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's she's religious. Very, very and, religious. And she yes. wants you to teach your kiddos about Santa Claus. Claus? Santa about Santa. Claus? Yep. Claus. She she thought I was doing them a disservice by telling them that Santa wasn't real. All right. We won. We like, won oh. the war on Christmas because Yay. a religious person <laughs> wants us to talk about freaking Santa Claus, Coca-Cola man himself like. I don't yeah. get it. Like she wasn't like you're not teaching about Jesus, baby Jesus in the manger and the hay and well, and the there was ass, that too. Yeah, the ass that, kept that time and the too. drummer Jason, boy. But you, Jason you should pull better, out his you know. um his sword now because obviously yeah. we won. So well, and, Jason, and, and the thing is, is like okay, so so it's okay. You know, I mean, okay, you, you're lying about uh, you know religion in general, but we're gonna go ahead and and, and lie about Santa, which. She fully admits isn't real. It's not real, right? And, and right. so it's like it's okay to lie about that. That's more important but, than than this other story. All right, but it's also important. Uh, all yeah, right, let, no, let's right. let's talk Santa, about Santa. Let's talk is a microcosm <laughs> of the entire redemption story of Christianity, and that was what I was pointing out to her. Let's yeah. like no, like he's watching what you do all the time, and if you're bad then you don't get presents. Like, let's, what let's, war is the story of heaven and hell? Let's talk about just, the war on Christmas, people. all right? Let's talk okay. about the war on Christmas, oh, yeah. all right? Yeah. So I wanted to get that out there. I know you did. Outside. I know you did. No, it's fine. It's fine. It, but but that, it, it heightens the hypocrisy and the... the it does. I don't even know what the goofy it headedness does. of it. There were, there were examples of actual banning of Christmas in history. Mm -hmm. Um... It's been all over social media, people like taking their jabs, but let's talk about some of them. England's okay. Puritan Parliament banned Christmas altogether in 1647. So some good old Christians, of course, not true Christians, right? Uh, banned Christmas no, in 1647. No. No um, not all Christians. They would show up in <laughs> London, would open up shop, show up to Parliament, shut down their churches on Christmas Day. They even blasted Yuletide delicacies like mincemeat pies, as idolatry and crust, according to Jerry Bowler's Christmas in the Crosshairs, 
Christmas only returned to merry old England in an official capacity when Chucky II, Charles II, restored the monarchy in 1660. Uh, that's a couple of years later. In America, we all know, we've heard this, the pilgrims didn't like it in 1620, um, nor did the Puritans uh, when they got here a couple of years later. And um, it was it was banned in Boston until 1659. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention France. In, again, in that book, Christmas in the Crosshairs, yeah, we. Oui. Um, yeah, we. The, oh, but you forgot to mention in Boston specifically, if oh, you were caught even displaying yes. a, the spirit of Christmas, you had to pay a fine of five, one, two, three, four, five ducats. Shillings. Oh, shillings. 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 How do you quantify that? Like four, like, how do you quantify the Christmas spirit? Like, Don't worry. Religious <laughs> overreach doesn't ask questions like that. They just. That's right. It's, it's um, a question. So in France, they, re asked. they renamed Christmas Dog Day to mock the holiday hmm. Hmm. as the government shut down Catholic churches, drowned priests. We're against that, of course, and established a national atheistic substitute, the cult of reason. That's on the nose. I love um, it. I love it. They uh, the revolution went after bakers. Oh no, bakers! They've been in the crossfires uh, for quite some time, haven't they? Uh, when they had holiday cakes called king cakes, galette de roi. I don't speak French. Uh, after the three magi, they Gato were le roi. Gato oui. le roi. Gato le si. roi. They were rebranded <laughs> as liberty cakes. Oh my God! Sounds like uh, sounds like sounds George very, Bush. Yeah, sounds um, very, sounds very also very Agent Orange. We, we getting to me, into I'm freedom sorry. fry territory here. <laughs> well, freedom or fry. equality <laughs> cakes. Um, and the mothers who bore sons, mothers who bore sons, were permitted to celebrate the festival of birth around Christmas time. Well, they they knew they had they had the energy. They had to capture that energy and and do it. Well, that didn't work out, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, the motherfucking Nazis decided to ruin Christmas by rewriting Christmas carols with fucking Nazi uh, lyrics. And because they were trying to substitute their own ethnic cult of a religion for the uh, religion of Christianity. Wait the, a minute. I thought people kept on saying that they were atheists. That doesn't compute. Well, they were, <laughs> but they had their own religion yeah, no, of they sorts they, they, they were they were based upon uh uh you know christianity as well um i mean they could you don't... make up their minds though well there yeah like it, nordic yeah. christianity nordic christianity like... <laughs> ethnic I, ethnic I traditions look them, i i look at hmm. the nazis per se as like how i looked at like the soviet union these are a a a group of people that worship the state. So yes. whoever is like the head yes. of state, yes. you know, yes. that, that is their religion. And that's what a lot of religious people think that uh, non-believers do, that we worship the state. Hell no, I don't worship the no. state. Um, speaking of the Soviet Union, the uh, USSR pushed the celebration of Christmas to New Year's, where it's, it's a bigger celebration to this day. Um, they didn't want Christmas competing with the religion of Soviet dictatorship. Um, so that worked there. Castro of Cuba fame canceled Christmas because he wanted to pe he wanted to get his people to focus on the sugar harvest. Well, that's nice. Um, in Brunei or Br Brunei, uh, Christians are free to celebrate Christmas, but they have to keep it on the DL. Mm. Um, according to the Telegraph, the country's Ministry of Religious Affairs argued people celebrating Christmas excessively and openly could damage the beliefs of the country's Muslim majority. That means Santa hats, religious songs, and Christmas decorations are off the table, uh, which is ruled by a wealthy sultanate. Uh, the government adopted the ban and a harsh penal code according to the Independent in 2014. In Saudi Arabia, no friend of freedom there, they allegedly re arrested 41 people who were plotting to celebrate Christmas in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, they have 1.2 million Christians living in Saudi Arabia, but it's an Islamic country, not, uh, not, a, not a place of incredible freedoms there. Um, do, does anyone else have any examples of actual instances of uh, restriction of the celebration of Christmas? 
No, not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, I'll let you go ahead and Nate. Nate if you I got a solid I, yes, let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I yeah, did absolutely. Something else, but go ahead. Um, so I worked in call centers. Um, it was one of my first jobs out of the army, mm -hmm. and um, the management at the call centers. They didn't expressly forbid people from saying Merry Christmas, but they strongly encouraged people to say Happy Holidays. And mm. so that, it's of course, no, it's not a ban, but it it, 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 ins it sort of instigated this knee jerk reaction from those who were white and were like, you are not going to tell me to say, I can say Merry Christmas. Well, that. That actually takes us into the next section, Nate. Um, well, I'm glad I'm because glad. because that's 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 not real, okay? No, it's not. We were real. talking about it's not we were talking all. about real <laughs> stuff. Now we're going to talk but, about fake stuff. Oh, go ahead. Hear me out. All right. Yeah. Hear me yeah, out. Hear so, so I would I would say Merry Christmas to folks, yeah. and occasionally I would be corrected, and I would say. They would say, oh, well, I'm Jewish. And I would say, well, in that case, happy Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. But but if we could perhaps turn that on its flip side and say, like, let's say I was Jewish and I yeah. was saying to people on the phones, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah and then someone corrected me and said, I'm a Christian. And then I would say, oh, well, oh, cool. In that case, Merry Christmas. And there would be zero objections. No one would care. Right. If 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 you were to state to someone that, hey, I celebrate this holiday, mm -hmm. and then they were to say, I celebrate the other holiday, there would be no objections unless you're a Christian. It's only the Merry Christmas folks. Nate, I'm talking problem. about real restrictions. That's still not a real restriction. You got to <laughs> wait. You're going to blow your load. You just blew your load. Oh my God. All right. Look, you know, now well, we're talking ask, about ask the my fake war. I do it all the time. I do now it all we're the talking time, about man. the fake. That was fake shit. Okay, now with the fake shit. All right. <laughs> pretend. Johnny and okay. Nate on nonprofits ever again. <laughs> pretend wow, that I said yeah. fake shit. All right. Now I say fake shit. <laughs> All right. When did this bullshit start? The term war on Christmas started in the United States around the late 90s with the right wing website VDARE -E -E began their war on Christmas competition. They, they posted as many mentions of holiday parties or other secular themed holiday celebrations, especially those that celebrated the holiday traditions of other religions as they could find. The website was condemned by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate group. OK, wow. Um, the, the practice of questioning the use of the word secular word holiday to refer to Christmas parties was picked up by Bill O'Reilly oh, shit be Billy, upon Billy, him Billy, 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 when Billy, he Billy. began encouraging his viewers to boycott retailers who use the term holiday. Okay. Now we're talking about fake boo hoo hoo shit like your people that you were working with Nate mm -hmm. in December, 2006, the Liberty council released a naughty or nice list shaming public institutions and corporations that intentionally intentionally avoided the use of um, Christian motifs and other decorations or greetings in their holiday marketing. Um, in December 2009, the American Family Association released its naughty and nice list uh, based on the same model, uh, first against the gap for leaving out the word Christmas, and they've continued to publish their naughty a nice list ever since. Let's not forget about Megan Kelly, who she moved on to. She moved off of Fox after her she unfortunate did. experiences there. But yeah. then let's not forget Megan Kelly for who she is. Mm -hmm. She said Santa Claus is white in a statement uh, <laughs> in response to Aisha Harris's co-op co article titled "Santa Claus Should Not Be a White Man Anymore." Uh, she dismissed Harris's article as revisionist attempt from the left-wing blogosphere and subsequently met with punchlines from the late night late late night pundit circles and criticism for rape bait, baiting may may i just say that i actually saw that in real time don't ask me why i was watching yeah. Fox News that night i just I, I i was and i actually saw her say Mel megan kelly that uh you know um santa is white just you know and and, yeah. the, and that's what it is and i was just like santa is not real. 
Sounds fake. <laughs> Heim he he Heimdall isn't real. Let Idris Elba play Heimdall. He did a good job. You know? Right? Rainbow Bridge and everything. Rainbow okay. Bridge. <laughs> uh, reactions to the war. Jeff Schweitzer, a commentator for the Huffington Post, you know, centrist publication that that is, addressed the commentators saying, there is no war on Christmas. The idea is absurd on every level. Those who object to being forced to celebrate another's religion are drowning in Christmas in a sea of Christianity dominating all aspects of social life. It's true. An 80% majority can claim victimhood only with an extraordinary flight from reality. Those are his words. Um, Walmart criticized the Catholic League for, for avoiding the word Christmas. Um, they complained. They threatened boycotts. And Walmart caved. And... The holiday shop was renamed the Christmas shop, and there would be a countdown, the days to Christmas feature. Target was attacked by the American Family Association for not using Christmas in any of their stores or print. Um, uh, what's interesting is this continued. Sometimes Best Buy was attacked. We're going to continue to use the worm holiday because there are several holidays throughout that time period. Again, there are holidays during Christmas time, right? And yep. we need to be respectful for them. Um, yeah. So they're on the watch list. Home Depot was criticized for using holiday and Hanukkah on their website for, a, but avoiding the term Christmas, they caved uh, Home Depot and they adjusted their website to make more references to Christmas. But Snopes revealed that they had Christmas all over the place, but they mm. caved anyway. They felt they were pressured. They felt the need to do that. Um, so th there are more instances Um that I have here, I actually have quite a bit. We have some in Canada where- um, Oh, don't get me started. Oh my God, no. <laughs> a public school in Ottawa planned to have the children in its primary choir sing a version of the song Silver Bells with the word Christmas uh, replaced by festive and people lost their shit. In the UK, they temporarily promoted the phrase Winterval uh, for a whole season of events, including Christmas That's festivities so in Birmingham. <laughs> um, critics attack the word Winterval as being political correctness gone mad. Um, oh, God. even though there was Merry Christmas on the council house, Christmas lights, Christmas trees, Christmas carols, and the Lord Mayor sent a Christmas card with a traditional Christmas scene wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. Yes, 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 yes. Political correctness gone mad with your fucking Christmas all over the place. Jesus. Any attempt at plurality is a, is an example of Christian yes. persecution. I, like, I, what the fuck? And that's I, all I, I've got. I, I just wanted to just say really, just really quickly that, you know, I personally wish that, you know, any of these people who actually, you know, swear up and down that Christmas is under siege to just stop it. I mean, even the article pointed out that Bill O'Reilly said in 2004 that more than 90% of American homes actually celebrate Christmas. And this is ne not necessarily like a, you know, whether you are um, yeah. a Christian or not, right? You know, like some shape, way, and form, this particular celebration happens. So I don't, people still, you know, buy a bunch of shit around this time of year people uh, i know that like i worked in a call center and we were taught to use reflective language so if yeah. someone said merry christmas to you you said merry christmas back sure. then you yeah, said holiday exactly. uh, happy holidays to you you say happy holidays back so yeah this is completely made up so stop okay jason last word so i you know we all know about the uh the cup controversy a few years ago and <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's like oh it doesn't yeah. it doesn't say christmas and you know i would say you know what give us a blank red cup with a sharpie on it so tucker carlson can draw a wreath and i can draw a penis on it and tell people <laughs> like him to go fuck himself yeah agreed that tucker part. carlson can do just that and, yes. and people of his ilk the the war is is stupid you're not being oppressed it's not hard to be a Christian in America or Canada in the 21st century. Get over yourself. Um, and that's my message. Uh, although, you know, to, to, to pay respects to the war dead in the, in the, the war on Christmas, um, you know, gone, but not forgotten, gone, but not forgotten. Hey, that is, that's the end of our show. Uh, yeah, Matt, that's the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I had a good time. I, Really, uh, 
I hate Christmas, but I love being here with you now. And I hope that <laughs> those of you who are watching the show, you have a good uh, winter lewd. You have a good winterval. You have a good holidays. Um, and that you just tell the people who you care about that you care about them. Tell them Johnny said a happy Dong Ji and Sol Invictus. And um, we will see you in the new year. Take care. Watch The Atheist Experience live Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash ytaxp and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash callaxp.